In this video, I'm going to talk about what surprised me most about the way the wealthy live. I went in expecting to hear conversations around VC capital, stocks, but what I heard was blood work, sleep scores, gene therapy, fancy words, right? Why are these rich Indians talking about blood work and therapies even at parties? Because when you've already bought everything money can buy, the only thing left is time. But how are these ultra wealthy people buying time? So I went down a research tunnel. In ancient Egypt, pharaohs didn't just build pyramids for the afterlife. You see, mummification wasn't ritual alone. It was their version of preservation technology. An ancient experiment in pressing paws on decay. Even the first Chinese emperor, Qin Shin Huang, sent expeditions to find the elixir of life, a magical potion that would make him immortal. These were unsuccessful expeditions. Well, surprise, surprise. Legend says the expedition reached Japan and colonized it. Ultimately, the emperor died because of mercury in a fake elixir. And India? We were ahead of the curve with Rasayana, a 2,000-year-old branch of Ayurveda rooted in the belief that aging isn't a disease to fight, but a process to harmonize with, using herbs, metals, and disciplined living. Europe wasn't far behind. Alchemists in the 1500s were convinced that the Philosopher's Stone would cure aging, sickness, and even death itself. As we stand here today, we know that none of it worked, but the obsession to beat time that's the part that's lived forever. In 2013, Google launched Calico, the mission statement to understand the biology that controls lifespan. That means he even Google tried to cure death. And a decade later, in 2023, tech entrepreneur Brian Johnson turned himself into a guinea pig. He spent $2 million a year, consumed a small pharmacy's worth of pills daily, and plasma transfusions with his teenage son not for clout, not for legacy, just for the chance to outsmart time, even by a few years. And so for centuries, the ultra-rich have tried to outwit death, first with potions, then with priests, and now with plasma. Is it surprising then when I tell you that the global longevity market has crossed $56 billion and it is projected to triple within the next few years? But access to the longevity market? That's not for you and me. Healthspan has always been a luxury good. Ultra HNIs can decode their DNA to see what diseases might hit them years in advance. They're freezing stem cells. So if something breaks later, they already have the new parts ready. Some are even freezing their whole bodies, hoping science catches up while they sleep in ice. If this sounds like sci-fi, it's not. It's a business and it's booming. On one side are the people who can afford decades. On the other side, people who can't even afford a checkup. The one where people watch ears slip through fingers they can't afford to fix. Did that get a little too dark? Don't worry. Don't despair. Before you go in a rabbit hole and chat GPT how to cryo-freeze yourself in a chamber, there's some good news. You don't need $2 million in a year to increase your lifespan. Because what science keeps telling us is pretty simple. The things that you need to live a longer life aren't found in a lab. They are found in your daily, everyday habits. Here's something that can help. Move a little every day. Turns out one of the strongest clues to your lifespan is how well your lungs and heart use oxygen when you move, also known as VO2 max. You see, none of us really need a gym, just a brisk walk, a simple dance while rinsing dishes, taking stairs instead of elevators, the point is to just move consistently and with purpose. Sleep isn't optional, it's life-saving. Skip it and your brain doesn't clear trash. Stress takes over and your immune system slacks. Aim for seven hours in a cool, dark, screen-free space. Your mood, focus and health will thank you. Make peace with your plate. No fat diets, just balance. Think simple. Think dal, sabzi, roti, eggs, toast, salad. Meals that respect your cells instead of tricking them. And lastly, stress. It doesn't stay in your head, it ages you. 
too much stress weakens your body from the inside out literally shortening your dna strands but managing it doesn't cost a thing a slow breath a walk without your phone or the permission to say no all work wonders american poet emily dickinson wrote because i could not stop for death he kindly stopped for me that was 1890 and it still stands true you can't cheat death not really but you can slow it down